Ronnie. He just he just had so much natural ability. I look up and inspire to, to his career and what he did. Biggest blow there was uh, not just that we lost a precious life, uh, but for me, I uh, lost a precious friend. Flamboyant on the track, but unassuming off it, this was Ronnie Peterson. quiet and shy super sweet should have achieved far more than he did behind the wheel of a Formula 1 car. He only won 10 races in an F1 career spanning 8 years and never claimed a world championship, yet he's revered as one of the sport's greatest drivers for his unique and often sideways style of driving. 2018 marks 40 years since the great Sweden's death after he was involved in a horrendous crash at the start of the 1978 Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Having survived the crash, but with terrible leg injuries, Peterson died the next day owing to complications from surgery. World sport journalist Nigel Roebuck was at the race and witnessed the aftermath. So it, it all happened in front of me, but of course it was it was such bedlam. I mean, I, I couldn't for the life of me immediately afterwards say, oh, well, it was because so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that and all the rest of it. But I just went down to the pit lane and everybody was out of their cars. Uh, except, um, strangely enough, Gilles Villeneuve, who never got out of his car the whole time. Never took his helmet off, never got out of his car, because he knew whatever it was wasn't good, and he just didn't want to know about it. It was a, it was a, it was a terrible scene. I mean, they, they, you know, uh, Ronnie, was, Ronnie was still on the track, on a stretcher. He was plainly badly hurt, he plainly damaged his legs very badly but he was conscious and he was talking um, and initially the the big fear was for actually if it was for Vittorio Brambilla who'd had a, a serious belt on the head from something and was uh, was was he was unconscious for a while Ronnie it was yes it was it was awful but you know he but he wasn't it wasn't like didn't appear to be life-threatening in any way and it must have been I guess the best part of two hours before the race was restarted it was shortened to 40 laps and then I remember going down to the um, motorhome to the John Player the Lotus motorhome um, and there were only three or four people in there uh, one of whom was Mario who of course had just become world champion uh, and he was I remember he was sitting he was slumped in a in a in, a, in an armchair with a magnum of Moët et Chandon next to him, unopened. Um, and it was the saddest thing in a way because he couldn't celebrate. But So we flew back, we flew back to Heathrow, got off the aeroplane, we were waiting by the, the luggage carousel and one of the Fleet Street guys went over to use one of the pay phones, no mobiles of course then, to call his office and, um, and he came back with this curious expression on his face and and he just said Ronnie's died I remember I can hear that as if it honestly as if it was said a minute ago that when Ronnie's died there was shock in his in his voice and Mario that morning went to the hospital to see Ronnie uh, was met on the steps of the hospital by Emerson Fittipaldi and he just had to take him on one side and say Mario don't know how to tell you this but he's gone Sideways style defied belief from the moment he began his F1 career aboard a March in 1970, but it was driving for Lotus between 1973 and 76 where he began to make his name. A single season back at March and then Tyrrell yielded little success, but it was a return to Lotus for what would be his final season where arguably his greatest drives occurred. 
His teammate was Mario Andretti, who would go on to win the 78 World Championship in the tragic circumstances. Andretti remembers not only a teammate, but also a friend. Arguably the best teammate, no question, uh, the best teammate I ever had, along with my son Michael, you know, and, uh, and, and the thing about that is, uh, you know, you live through the season and, you know, we were friendly before, you know, became teammates, but uh, Ronnie was one of those individuals that uh, you would gravitate to, you know, you had outside of the race car, and, and being open with one another, being honest, um, and our families, uh, you know, used to spend time together, that's the other thing that would come, you know, when he come to the States, he would come up to uh, my place uh, the lake, and we'd just raise hell, and try to kill ourselves, doing stuff, and have fun, and and so it's, uh, uh, and all the, you know, the pranks and everything else that we used to pull and everything, uh, you know, gosh. Uh, so it, it, it was, it was making a uh, happy life for us, and, and all of a sudden we lost all of it. And, um, you know, it should have been the happiest day of my career. My life as a racing driver, obviously I couldn't celebrate because I lost, uh, you know, best friend at the time and, and that loss uh, is always there you know you never forget that and uh, there's always a reminder you know that comes around that uh, whether it's an anniversary like we we're talking now or, but, uh, but it's always there despite it being four decades since his death Peterson's legacy lives on Fellow Swede and F1 driver Marcus Ericsson even ran a replica helmet of Peterson's at Monaco in 2014. Yeah, he's, he's the biggest name in motorsport in Sweden uh, that we ever had, and he's still a legend in Sweden. You know, he's one of the big sports persons that we've ever had in Sweden. So if you name like the big ones, we have Jan Borg, Ingmar Stenmark, and then uh, Ronnie Peterson is up there. You know, with the top three, top five biggest uh, sports stars from Sweden all time. And I think for me growing up. Uh, because he died so many years before I was even born, I don't think I knew a lot about him growing up. But then the more I was out in Europe uh, racing, the more I got to know about Ronnie and the history and, and you know who he was as a driver but also as a person. And then I got to know and meet his daughter Nina and, and became a good friend of her. And then you know I just got more and more interested about Ronnie and, and you know inspired by his career and the way he came through, you know, and it, also the fact that he's from the same uh, city as me in oh, right. Sweden, you know, means a lot as well, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, some, someone I really, yeah, I, I look up and inspire to, to his career and what he did. I tried to sort of, uh, yeah, race for, for my country, obviously, but also race for Ronnie, Ronnie in a way, so, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I have that in the back of my mind, yeah. Ericsson might not have seen him race, but those who did will never forget a driver on the absolute limit. You can watch. You could watch Ronnie going through the old woodcut all day long, you know, with the tail out, 165 miles an hour, lap after lap, absolutely on the edge, you know, just not quite spinning. That was that was really something because you just watched that and you thought in a thousand years I couldn't do that. <laughs>